I was born and grew up in Washington Courthouse. I went through grade school and, and uh, high school in, in Washington. Uh, my father was in the grocery business, and uh, my mother, uh, when I was in about the seventh grade, uh, started teaching again. I had a paper route uh, for, the, for the daily newspaper. I sold uh, the Saturday Evening Post and Collier's and Women's Home Companions. Worked at the YMCA and uh, had odd jobs. So began the childhood life of Dean Fight. No Huckleberry Finn he. He started by putting in hours of diligent work and never really stopped. You're right, he was, he was a hard, hard worker. He pulled ice and delivered and shoveled coal. I worked day in and day out. I used to go with the guy on the ice wagon and I never will forget the first 100 pounds I put on my shoulder. I dropped in a rocking chair while I was trying to open a screen door. Dean has a tremendous amount of energy. Yeah, I worked 12-hour 12, 12 shifts seven days a week while I was uh, in school. He has a, uh, an amazing amount of energy. He's constantly working paper in hand and pencil and doing all the, the, the background work and all the, the details. You almost have to put a desk in front of Dean for him to have a good time. And Dean Fight has had a good time most of his life although the beginnings weren't easy. Right, I came down here to UC in 1930 and uh, enrolled in, in the uh, uh, co-op course as a commercial engineer. The money that I had saved to come to college, I lost in 1928 and 29 in the banks. While working his way through college, he met the girl he would marry. About 19... 34 when I was co-oping in, in Gallup, Lisa Ohio. That's where we met. Met in a, in a tea room. And I can remember having uh, my mother down to visit and, and remarking that here comes the tallest man I've ever seen. And I guess that was the beginning of things. I suggested a moonlight cruise of the, the Island Queen. And she agreed and Norm and I started going together. And we were married in 1936. After a short stint with some wholesale grocery companies, Dean was hired by Procter & Gamble. The first assignment we had was Atlanta, and then we went to Jackson, Mississippi. And then we came back to Cincinnati, and then to Memphis, and then in service. Then I went into the Army and was gone for about four years. Dean was trained in coastal artillery and sent to Trinidad for two years. Returning to the States, he was retrained in field artillery and sent to Europe in time for the crossing of the Rhine River. He earned a bronze star that he won't talk about and a purple heart that he sloughs off. I got cut above the eye was all, but it wasn't anything serious. And that's also indicative of Dean Fight. You'll never catch him bragging about his accomplishments, for instance, that he returned from the war with the rank of major. I was lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. He rejoined the P&G family and went to Ivorydale and then downtown to the general office and right on up the corporate ladder. He ended up as, as, a, as a group vice president and director. I was responsible for the financial end and the legal end and tax and the government the relations and the airplane operations and the public relations and so on. All the while, Dean Fight was making friends and gaining an enviable reputation. You can almost say Dean Fight is a man without peer. Better rounded than most financial people. Always in good humor and um, interested in anybody he was talking to. A warm smile. Pleasant, outgoing person with a very quick wit. Positive and optimistic. When it comes to business, he's all business. He can get a point across uh, very quickly, succinctly. He tells you what he thinks. Uh, straightforward. He tries to be fair. Very courteous, as everyone knows. Has a nice way with people. He uh, sets no standards for others that he won't maintain on his own. He has a great mind for financial matters. Understood all aspects of accounting. You could rely on him to give you his best. Just throw himself into it with uh, almost disregard for his own time. He wants to be of service in the community. Always been there when the community needed him. He's one of those people that uh, you would describe as all wool and a yard wide. Just look at some of the many, many ways that Dean has benefited our area. Time and time again, he has given of himself to help others. That amount of civic and charitable work would fill anyone's plate to overflowing, but not Dean. He also served on the boards of a number of businesses. I first knew him at Cincinnati Millicom when he was a director of the company. I was a pretty young man back then, and it was wonderful to have him on the board. Perhaps Fight's greatest contribution to Cincinnati was in city planning. Dean Fight is the only person who has served on all three of the modern 
plans for downtown Cincinnati. He was on Mark Upson's 1964 working review plan. It was the beginning of the Renaissance where they really designed Fountain Square. In 1980, they asked Dean to be chairman of the new 2000 plan committee. Dean took over as chairman and did a magnificent job. He was the spark plug, and the thing happened because he put the energy into it. We still look at his plan for the city as the base document that the city is operating under now. Then in 1990, he and I both served on the 2000 plan review committee. He was motivated solely by what he felt to be the best entrance of Cincinnati. Service to the community and Dean's love of nature led him to the Museum of Natural History. He and I uh, shared a great deal of time together at the Museum of Natural History. Uh, he is the chairman and myself as president. We had to consider the possibilities of, of relocating the institution. Dean was very instrumental in developing the mindset at the board level that something needed to be done. We made some real progress during those times, thanks to his leadership. While Dean has been on board for many, many businesses and public service duties, and has served with good grace, that can't always be said of his outdoor activity. If you see lanky Dean on a on a horse uh, trotting along a very narrow mountain trail. You see a sort of a feature that you might not suspect when you see him downtown. On board for almost anything, Dean has been known to go overboard in his enthusiasm. And Dean was just ahead of me, and then we had hit the first big uh, wave. And there goes Dean, and into the water he went. And it was a job. It took about uh, five minutes to pull him back on board. For those of you who missed that, here's a Channel 9 instant replay in slow mo. We even have still pictures of the event. Now you see Dean, now you don't. At the end of the day, I thought maybe Dean would say, I don't, didn't like this trip. He said, no, he had a wonderful time. He'd do it again, anytime. Retired from P&G for some years, Dean has occupied himself with the administration of his neighborhood. Uh, he has taken the helm of uh, mayor of Amberley Village after serving as vice mayor for four years. He is clearly a leader uh, in, the, in the truest sense of the word. But he does bowl you over with his energy. When he arrives here for a meeting, he's already had five or six cups of coffee, and, uh, <laughs> and he'll usually accept two or three more. He was once asked to fill out a consumer survey on how many cups of coffee he drank in a week. They didn't have a category for him. I think he was 56 and over. It may be the coffee, but we really feel it's a big and generous heart. As Bernie Boratin says, I'm not sure we'll ever see uh, another individual like this in the Cincinnati area for a, a long, long time to come. He's special. Ladies and gentlemen, join us in welcoming a very special, great living Cincinnatian, Mr. Dean Fites.